Hey yo, welcome back to Anime Sareo. The story we will cover today is named La Flops. It's a little rich in the fan service area, if you know what I mean. To give you a slight overview, it's about a guy who gets forced to live with five very seductive women, each of whom want a piece of our boy. And let's just say there's no shortage of misunderstandings. Again, if you know what I mean. Now before we start, let's play a little game. Watch the whole video and comment down below your favorite woman out of the five and your reason. But no generic answers like big boobs or a big ass, uh, oh wait, somebody already commented that, damn. Anyway, we'll count the votes and see who wins and you'll be able to determine if you have a good taste or not. Let's begin. An ordinary high school student, Asahi, encounters a magical girl but it turns out to be just a dream. At breakfast, he watches a fortune teller on TV who reveals that his lucky words are corner, train, staircase, robot, dog, and letter. On his way to school, Asahi accidentally bumps into a girl in a corner, mistaking her dropped panties for a handkerchief. In the empty train car, a woman falls asleep and leans on him. In his attempt to move away, he mistakenly grabs her breasts, prompting her to kick him as he hurriedly exits the train, apologizing. As Asahi descends the staircase, a yellow-haired girl trips and falls above him. Mistaking a plastic banana case in his pants for something else, she berates Asahi and flees. In a nearby garden, a malfunctioning cleaning robot approaches him, holding a bra. Just as Asahi takes it, red-haired girl accuses him of meddling with the robot and stealing her bra. He denies the accusation, but the robot takes the girl away. Asahi's path then leads him to witness a gray-haired girl being dominated by an unruly golden retriever. Initially trying to avoid getting involved, his attempt fails when the dog turns its attention towards him, attacking Asahi. Kindergarten kids eventually wake him up and realizing he's late, Asahi rushes off to school. Arriving at his classroom, he is taken aback to see all the four girls and the boy Asahi encountered earlier. Aoi Izumizawa, a transfer student from another Japanese school, is the girl he collided with in the corner. Karin Itzel, a German fashion model, is the one who fell on him at the staircase. Amelia Irving, hailing from America, was involved with the malfunctioning robot. Ilya Ilyukin, a transfer student from Russia, is the gray-haired boy. Upon realizing Asahi's presence, the girls immediately slap him. During PE class, his friend Yoshio inquires about the situation and advises him to resolve the misunderstandings. Later, Asahi discovers a letter in his locker, asking for a meeting near the cherry blossom tree. He then encounters Aoi, who asks if he has something of hers. Asahi mistakenly retrieves Amelia's bra instead of the handkerchief he picked up, leading to a slap from her. During lunch, Karin struggles to find food from the sold-out vending machine. Asahi offers her a banana from his crumpled case, solving their misunderstanding. He then witnesses Ilya being chased by the same dog and intervenes, getting bitten instead of him. Grateful, Ilya thanks Asahi. Despite his injured hand, he returns to class, where Mongfa notices his wound and escorts him to the infirmary. As she leaves, Amelia enters and searches for adhesive bandages for discomfort around her chest. Asahi recalls he still possesses her bra and returns it, prompting Amelia to realize her mistake and apologize for accusing him. Yoshio asks if Asahi has resolved the misunderstandings. He explains that all issues have been cleared except one. Asahi then heads to the cherry tree and is surprised by its blossoming state, where he encounters Aoi. She confesses her love for him, leaving Asahi shocked and amazed. Asahi is taken aback when Aoi confesses her love. However, she flees in embarrassment due to a wardrobe mishap. One after another, the girls and Ilya express their feelings for Asahi in increasingly intense ways. Mongfa whisks him away while seeking refuge from strange men. She kisses Asahi, which makes him run off. Later, Karin and Amelia make their own confessions and even try to force a marriage. After evading the girls all day, Asahi returns home to find all five of them waiting for him, crouched in a bow. He listens to a message from his father, revealing that all five of them are potential marriage candidates from different parts of the world, and Asahi must choose one. Until then, they will all live together. Asahi tries to object due to a lack of space in his house. Surprisingly, the house has magically gained extra rooms, leaving him shocked. Ultimately, he allows everyone to stay, understanding they have nowhere else to go. The candidates make various attempts to win Asahi's favor. Aoi cooks dinner while Ilya bakes cakes. Their efforts escalate, with Karin trying to join him in the bath, Amelia hiding in the bathroom, and Mongfa hanging from his bedroom ceiling. Frustrated, Asahi demands they leave, but the candidates plead with him. He leaves the house and goes to a cherry tree, where Aoi follows him and reveals they all intend to leave for his happiness. However, Asahi changes his mind as she explains their excitement despite not knowing much about him. 
they return home to share the good news with the others. In the midst of the morning rush, Asai vents to Aoi about the constant intrusion of the girls into his room. He also observes her exceptional management skills and how she respects his privacy. Later, Ilya assists Aoi in preparing breakfast. Amelia interrupts them and tries her hand at writing Asahi's name in kanji. However, she fails, resulting in an embarrassed outburst. During lunch at school, Asahi is surprised by seeing all his favorites in lunchbox. He wonders how Aoi knows about his food preferences. Amelia's struggles with writing kanji lead to another embarrassing moment. Worried about an upcoming kanji test, she accepts Asahi's offer to help her study. As they study together, Asahi realizes her strong aversion to losing and supports Amelia's efforts. As the week progresses, she becomes increasingly intense in her studies. One day, Asahi suggests that they stop studying and leave the school together, but Amelia is fixated on continuing her studies. She throws a tantrum and expresses the desire to learn his language. At home, the other candidates notice Amelia isolating herself in her room. Asahi decides to check on Amelia and finds her feeling emotional. He comforts Amelia, praising her determination and emphasizing that hard work is enough, not always needing victory. Amelia also has a flashback of Asahi's childhood and is perplexed. He then gives her kanji cards made by him to assist her in learning. Eventually, they take the rest and Amelia's result may not be excellent, but she is satisfied with her hard work. Asahi finds his lunch with Amelia's properly written kanji in a heartfelt note, while Yoshio envies it, leaving Asahi with a smile. One morning, Ilya is reminded of his father's directive to live as a boy instead of using her true identity and name, Irina. Later, by chance, Mongfa, Aoi, and Ilya all win a raffle prize for a night at a hot spring, along with their partners. They bring Asahi, Amelia, and Karin with them. Upon arriving at the hot springs, the group discovers a peculiar setting adorned with Tengu statues, a supernatural creature in Japanese legends. Asahi suggests dividing the rooms by gender, leading him and Ilya to share a bedroom for the night. He playfully interacts with the candidate, displaying masculine behavior that makes Ilya uneasy. Unbeknownst to Asai, the candidate is grappling with a significant predicament. Ilya was assigned female at birth, but has been masquerading as a cisgender male. Her father ingrained in Ilya the obligation to pretend to be a boy. Thus, she continues to present herself as a man in front of everyone. At night, Asahi suggests to take a dip in the hot spring. All the girls get naked and relax in the hot water together. Meanwhile, Ilya is perplexed at the prospect of being with Asahi in the spring. She covers herself to hide her identity. Both of them also get inside a sauna. Later, Ilya goes outside for fresh air, which makes her covering cloth fly away. In an attempt to conceal her true identity, she results to donning a Tengu mask. This frightens Amelia and Karin as they are trying to peek and Ilya is successful at hiding her identity. However, once inside, she slips and Asahi ultimately sees her true identity. When he inquires about what Ilya truly desires, Asahi learns that she yearns to embrace her original gender as a girl and is wary of fulfilling her father's dying wish. As he comforts Ilya, she too experiences a flashback of their shared childhood. Asahi and Yoshio are at school when they notice how genuinely popular Mongfa is among the students. Amelia joins the conversation and points out that it's not just the boys who enjoy being around the teacher. The girls also seem to like her company. Later that night, Mongfa drinks a lot at home. When she gets drunk, the teacher becomes affectionate and cuddly, giving everyone a warm embrace before falling asleep. Asahi takes care of Mongfa, putting her to bed before returning to his own room for the night. However, as he steps into his room, Asahi notices a lump on the bed. Assuming it's Amelia under the sheets, he pulls it off, only to discover that it isn't a girl at all. Instead, there is a gruff-looking man with a military appearance who has come to take him away. Asahi wakes up in a strange place, tied with strings. It turns out that he has been abducted in order to lure Mongfa out so that Colonel Sanders can seek revenge on her. Soon after, the teacher breaks in and manages to help Asahi. Together, they defeat several guards outside as they make their way through the compound. Mongfa goes to the control room due to a power outage and malfunctioning lifts, preventing their escape. It is there that Colonel Sanders appears and reveals Mongfa's true identity as Bloody Tiger, a feared agent who has eliminated several underworld organizations. Sanders seeks revenge for the special task force he had lost to Mongfa. As the colonel attacks her, he realizes that Asahi is Mongfa's weakness. Just as Sanders is about to kill Asahi, Bloody Tiger awakens and traps him in alloy strings, leaving the colonel gasping for breath. Mongfa and Asahi manage to escape and, and fight their way through the compound defeating any enemies they encounter. Mongfa is saddened by the fact that she can't return to her normal life after being dragged back into the chaos Mongfa left behind long ago. 
Suddenly, the colonel appears alive, wearing an electric robotic armor, determined to kill her. Mongfa fights him, but she is losing the battle. Just when things seem dire, Asai rushes in to assist. Colonel Sanders strips off his clothes, revealing Asai's body covered in lotion, which he spreads onto Colonel's armor. Asai then uses an electric rod to shock the lotion-smeared armor, while Mongfa continues her attack. Together, they manage to defeat Sanders. Asai then gives a heartfelt speech to Mongfa, assuring her that she can come back home and that everything will be alright. She says that Mongfa has become a part of their family. They return home, but in the morning, the other girls find Mongfa and Asai sleeping together, leading to a misunderstanding. One night, Asai encounters a flying monster that tries to attack him, but is saved by a magical girl. The next day at school, he tells Yoshio about it, who doesn't believe him. Suddenly, mechanical aliens appear and release robots that scan humans for their gender. Yoshio gets scanned by one of those robots, resulting in a device attaching to his crotch and causing an explosion that destroys his reproductive organs. Shockingly, it is revealed that Karin is a magical girl whose power increases based on her feelings for someone. She tries to confront the main alien machine but fails to destroy it. Karin's helper Sprite appears and explains that the monsters from other dimensions are trying to destroy the world. It guides Asahi and Karin into a high-tech trailer room with a couch and a power meter. The Sprite informs Karin that she can reach her maximum power by making love with someone she likes. So, Karin tries to initiate intimacy with Asahi. Almost kissing her, he realizes that the power meter doesn't increase at all. Asahi tells Karin that if her heart doesn't race in that moment, it means that she doesn't truly like him. The helper Sprite tries to convince Asahi to be intimate with Karin, but he refuses, emphasizing that Asahi cares about her and wants Karin's first time. However, the robots discover Asahi and he lures them away from Karin so she can escape. This sacrifice causes her power meter to reach its maximum level. Using her magical abilities, Karin defeats the robot aliens, and as a result, every man's reproductive organs are restored. Now that every girl has had a moment with Asahi, a round table of high-tech alarm clocks, each corresponding to a candidate interesting in marrying Asahi, is seen. They discuss among themselves that the results are interesting. Suddenly, a mysterious woman named Yoshino is revealed, leading their meeting. And on this cliffhanger, our recap comes to an end. Again, don't forget about our game, and comment down below which one of them did you like the most and why, and see if you're in the majority or not. As for everything else, drop us a like, share it with your otaku friends, and subscribe to Anime Soreo for more awesome animes like this recapped on your feet. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace!